Hello, this is going to be our final video for EOC review number one for our NC Math 3. My name is Robert Weiser, and I'll be going over equations of the circles in a coordinate plane. For this uh, part of the video, it's really important that you have Desmos open so you can do some of these problems in the graph. Um, we're going to be going over this uh, part of the NC Math 3 standards, and it's the equation of the circle formula in standard form. We're also going to be showing how to get into standard form from a more uh, expanded form. You may come in, uh, in handy to use midpoint and distance formula in these problems, although I don't think in these particular ones we will use them. But here they are, just in case you need them for any of the practice problems you do. Um, just to be clear, when I say equations of a circle, I mean that you're going to graph uh, you know, a, an equation with an x and a y. It's going to look either like this, where it's got parentheses with the x and the y in them, and you'll have some numbers perhaps added or subtracted from them with the square. And then you'll have this number at the end. Now, what that represents is the center of the circle. So this three is gonna give you a center of negative three, and this minus two is gonna give you the Y coordinate of the center of positive two. So it's always gonna be the opposite. And then if you look at the radius, the radius of that circle is one, two, three units. Well, that's the square root of nine. So this number here is R squared at the end of that. So you may also see it in a different form. You may see it in um, an expanded form. And I'll tell you that right now, this is the same equation as this. So um, just depending on how you see it, we're gonna be needing to be able to get an equation like this into this form and, and perhaps vice versa. But and, and the most important thing is we have to be able to identify what the center and the radius is of these circles. So we'll use, our, use Desmos to help us with these questions. Let's go to a couple examples. All right, part five, number one, a uh, circle is a tangent is tangent to the x-axis and y-axis. If the center of the circle is 2 squared to 3, comma 2 squared to 3, what is the equation of the circle in standard form? What this question is really saying is you have a circle in quadrant one with a center of 2 squared to 3, 2 squared to 3. Tangent means that it just touches the line. It doesn't actually go over or across it. So it's actually going to all be in quadrant one here. This is this is actually going to touch the y-axis and the x-axis here. So we can actually figure out the radius because the radius is going to be that same length as the x or the y value. So that radius is actually also going to be 2 square root of 3. Now, when I'm coming up with the equation, remember the standard form of the equation is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Now, h and k are just the center. So since these are positive numbers, we're just going to subtract them. x minus 2 square root of 3 squared plus y minus 2 square root of 3 squared equals 2 square root of 3 squared. Now, um, we are almost pretty much have this written down the way we want to. However, we're going um, to simplify that 2 square root of 3 squared. Um, when you square 2 squared to 3 squared, you actually get 12. You can see what I do. I mean, you can do it all in the calculator here if you want to. But really what that is is 4 times 3 because the square root of 3 squared is just 3. Um, so 2 squared is going to be 4. So regardless, that's going to be 12 at the end. You can't really do much with the number 2 squared to 3 inside of the parentheses. We'll just leave them the way they are. All right, so we can set up our equation. Um, X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. Um, tangent just means, again, it's just going to hit the line, but it's not going to go over. And if you square 2 squared to 3 squared, you're going to get 12. So because R squared is at the end, 2 squared to 3 squared is just going to be 12. Um, you can see that progression here. Um, I could I could do that mentally. You know, 2 squared is 4. Square root of 3 squared is 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. But you can also put it in the calculator to get 12 by itself. Now, that's going to be your equation. You can't really do much with the 2 squared of 3 inside the parentheses. So you're just going to leave them put. I want to show you how this looks on the graph if you were to graph it. Uh, so here's the picture that I had drawn. Now you're going to see it's uh, it's, it's going to give you a decimal approximation of 2 squared of 3 there as your center. But again, that pretty much hits it uh, right there. That radius is going to be that same distance. Uh, 2 times squared of 3 is about 3.464. So there's your equation. There's your circle. That's what it means to be tangent, just hitting the axis right there. Let's go on to the next question. All right, and this question is a little bit easier. It says, what's the equation of a circle that has a center of negative 3, 2, and passes through the point 4, 3? So we first can set up uh, the center part, because the center is just going to be the opposite. 
inside the parentheses. So it's going to be parentheses x plus 3, close squared, plus parentheses y minus 2, close that square. We just don't know the r. So the way I do it, and some other teachers do it a different way, but the way I do that is I go over here and it says it's got to go through the point 4, 3. 4 is an x value, 3 is an y value. So I'm actually going to go here and I'm going to substitute 4 in for x, 3 in for the y, and I'm going to leave that plus 3 squared, minus 2 squared. I'm going to figure out what everything else around that is. So I'm going to get, um, you know, parentheses 4 plus 3 squared plus parentheses 3 minus 2 squared. I'm going to figure out that number. Use your calculator, or you can use mental math if you'd like. Calculator says that number is 50, so we'll go ahead and plug 50 at the end. And that'll give you answer choice B as the correct answer. Um, go back in your equation here. If you'd like to, you can graph it and kind of see, does that make sense in the context of this question? Here's the equation. And you can see 4, 3 lies right on that circle. So we did our job correctly. Let's go on to question number 2. Or excuse me, question number three. This question says, state the center and the radius of the circle, x squared plus y squared plus 8x minus 6y minus 11 equals 0. Now, you can type that in. And you might be able to estimate the center and the radius that way. And if I do that, the center is going to be... Um, it's going to be in quadrant two, it looks like. But I can actually look at my answer choices to help me. So if I type in parentheses negative 4, 3 versus parentheses 4, negative 3, you see that's not going to be in the center. And then definitely 8, negative 6 is not going to be in the center. So I know it's going to be A or D. Now, as far as getting the radius go, you can just count. So how far out is it going to be out to the edge? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spaces from that center to the edge. So I know the radius is going to be 6. And I know my answer is going to be A without lifting a pencil if I wanted to do it that way. Um, I am going to show you how to do this using um, completed the square method. So I would write this down. Because you may come across a question where it asks you for the next step in the process. What's How do you use complete the square? So the first thing you do is you rewrite the x's together. And then you leave a space. You write the y's together. You leave a space. Um, if there's a number on the left side, you bring it to the other side, change its signs. It's going to be a, a positive 11, but you're going to add two spaces after that 11 because what you add to one side, you must add to the other. The next thing we got to do is we got to complete the square for the B terms. The B terms are the numbers in front of X and Y. So we're going to take that 8 and we're going to divide by 2. We're going to take that 8 divided by 2 and then we're going to square it. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 squared is 16. We're going to write that right there. We're going to copy that to the right side. We're going to do the same thing for the y. Just keep that positive. That 6y, um, it's going to be 6 divided by 2 squared. I don't deal with the negative because the negative squared is always positive anyway. So that's going to be 3 squared. 3 squared is going to be 9. Add it to the right side. The next thing I do is I factor. So I write this as one parenthesis x. I copy this sign down plus the number that follows that is going to be the number inside the parentheses. Eight divided by two is four. So the square on the outside, four squared is 16. Four times two is eight. That's the factored form of this. Over here, I do the same thing with a y. Parentheses y, bring down this minus. Half of six is three. Three squared is nine. So put a square on the outside. Add these three numbers together. 11 plus 9 is 20. 20 plus 16 is 36. Now I have the equation in standard form. So I can get the opposites. The center is going to be negative 4, uh, comma, positive 3. And the radius is going to be the square root of 36. The square root of 36 is 6. All right, go to question 4. Question four says, what is the center of the circle with a general equation x squared plus y squared plus 12y minus 8x equals 10? We just want to know the center. So you can you can do what I did on uh, the last question. You can also graph it. Uh, find a way to do it that makes sense to you. Pause the video, and then we can check the answer. 
All right, if you just do straight up like graph the circle, graph the four centers, you're going to see the only one that's going to be in the center is four negative six. So it's going to be A. Um, there's another shortcut that I have just for the center part. And you can do this on without graphing if you want. You can take the numbers in front of the X. So I can take the negative eight divided by two. And then I can switch the signs. So it's going to be positive four. And I can do the 12 divided by two six switch the signs negative six so that actually works as well um you could also do the completing the square method that we did on the last problem let me pause the video and just work it out so you can see and then you can um just see my work on that all right i have the work here for completing the square if you'd like to see it that way or copy that down um thanks for watching this video again that concludes eoc review number one the next videos that i post will be going over a different document eoc review number two which also has a lot of things uh particularly with circles uh trigonometry and a little bit of function transformations stay tuned for more thanks for watching